I think it's safe to say that Call of Duty lost a little bit of its credibility after releasing the disaster that was Modern Warfare 3. It was a $70 DLC that had an awful campaign, poor multiplayer, and poor zombies. Activision pretty much threw whatever wacky game mode or microtransaction that would stick to buy time for the next COD title. A year later, that brings us to the release of Black Ops 6. At this point, I did not have faith that Black Ops 6 was going to be any good, but I also heard that the game was in development for 4 years compared to the 16 months that MW3 had. So hearing that Black Ops 6 received a little love in TLC, it restored a little flame in my heart that this game could finally get COD back on the right track. With my restored hope in the game, I play the game for a while now and I have to say it feels like Call of Duty is coming back, but there are some issues with this game as well. I'm not going to act like this game is absolutely amazing like other people will, but I'll try to paint an honest reflection of the game. So as the video goes on, I'll throw in timestamps that talk about each main part such as the campaign, multiplayer, zombies, and war zone. Don't worry about spoilers as I'll try to refrain from talking about them, but if I do, I'll throw in a spoiler warning just like this and a warning. So if you want to hear more about the game and my thoughts about it, please watch the video and I'll try my best to give you an honest breakdown. Let's go. As I mentioned earlier, MW3 had an awful campaign that was filled with cheesy and predictable outcomes, as well as a rushed concept of open world missions that were meaningless, a storyline that was rushed and was not developed, and was one that made the community livid. With Black Ops 6, the experience was the complete opposite. It felt engaging, had a solid storyline, interesting gameplay, and expanded upon areas where MW3 touched, such as open world missions. But the campaign still had its weak points, which I'll break down here soon. So what is the campaign about? The campaign takes place in 1991 where you primarily play as an operative named Case, who's a part of a team with Marshall and Woods. After your mission goes sideways because of a mishap, you and your team are suspended and are now having to work in the shadows far away from the reach of the CIA in order to uncover the truth of the paramilitary group named Pantheon that appeared randomly from that botched mission. Upon further discovery, your team learns of a biological weapon named the Cradle and that the Iraqis were able to attain the destructive chemical weapon. As you dig deeper into the deep state, you find yourself questioning who it is you can trust as well as what is the truth. The campaign has 18 total missions, of which 7 of them are filler missions, and takes about 7-8 to eight hours to complete. In these filler missions, you are able to walk around your safe house, which is called the Rook, and you can interact and talk with your squad, buy upgrades that will enhance you on missions, and do some minigame puzzles that will give you some easy money. What I like about these filler missions are the added layers to the characters in the developing plotline. You get a better idea of everyone's state of mind and how the story is progressing. The upgrade benches are cool as a general idea, but I found myself not really caring about investing in them. I'd just rather buy the guns for multiplayer than getting small upgrades for the campaign. The gameplay is what we all want to know, right? It plays great. Compared to other CODs, you're working more in the shadows. There are times where you will do espionage or engage in thrilling combat. That is pretty much what you can expect of any Call of Duty, but I think this game goes a little bit deeper in working in the shadows compared to previous titles, which makes it interesting. What I also liked about the campaign was how they improved upon the open world missions. In MW3, those open world missions felt pointless and kind of gimmicky. It felt cheap because the development was rushed. But Black Ops 6 execution of this concept was much better and makes up less of the campaign compared to MW3. I felt like I had more control over my playthrough and I enjoyed playing in the sandbox. Although it may seem like I am propping this game up to seem fantastic, I do have some issues that bother me. The first issue I have is that missions are on a spectrum. On one hand, some of these missions are great as they have the perfect combination of tempo, plot, action, and entertainment. While some of these other missions felt like they were slow burns, boring, and sometimes made me think what am I even playing. Now spoilers ahead, but there is a mission called High Rollers where you and the entire squad break into a casino to retrieve a dossier hidden in the vault, which is critical to the storyline. This mission is my favorite because it was all over the place from working undercover to fighting your way out. It was just a great experience. That mission is one of the many that made me think that Call of Duty is coming back. However, there is a mission called Emergence that made me question what are we even doing here. You and Marshall have to break into a bio lab in Kentucky to learn more about the origins of Cradle after discovering that Saddam Hussein had the bio weapon. But there's a catch here. What the fuck is this piece of shit?
Yeah, I understand that this is a bioweapon, and hallucinations and the heightened frenzy are part of it, but the zombies just threw me off. It just felt wrong and lazy in a sense. I also get that Case was programmed with the cradle at the Kentucky lab, but playing through the hallucinations after finding the zombies, mannequins, and your inner self after 40 minutes just left a sour taste in my mouth. Another issue I had with the campaign was that the dialogue and voice acting was poor and cheesy at points. Look at this clip. There, on our six. You can't outrun this! Take him out! Swat that bird out of the sky, Case! What the hell are you waiting for? We need to hit him with a rocket. You are facing death, you are fighting for your life, but Harrow just has the most monotone reaction I have ever heard for a COD game. I think back to the older CODs where they had more distinct and guttural reactions. We can look at Black Ops 2 where Woods shot Mason. No, no, no! Mason! I know the circumstances here are a bit different, I mean not a bit, but greatly different, but the disparity of immersion is immense. I felt what the actor was portraying in these older CODs, but this game lacked the sense of immersion. There was no sense of emotion. As for the cheesy lines, they are pretty much scattered all throughout the campaign, but the one that sits in my mind is the one from the mission most wanted. You guys see the great escape? Yeah, you didn't make it out. We will. If we can outgun them, we outrun them. They had four years to come up with iconic lines for this game, and the best they could do was that? Are you kidding me? Now, do these cheesy lines and poor voice acting performances ruin my experience? No, but it just takes the enjoyment down a little bit. Overall, I would say that the campaign acts as a 7 to 8 hour long action blockbuster movie. You work in the shadows to reveal the truth, but the further you dig, the messier it gets. From espionage to full-scale combat, this campaign offers a variety of playstyles that fits the player's experience. The campaign is solid, and it follows the classic themes of a Black Ops, which is that biochemical weapons are being prepared to be used against the United States and its interests, as well as the usage of sleeper agents within the deep state. I would give this campaign a solid 8 out of 10. It's not fantastic like many people are making it out to be, but it is a strong story that is highly enjoyable, and I think that most people are overrating this campaign just simply because of how bad Call of Duty was last year. Now, the multiplayer is what you can expect for any Call of Duty. It is fun, but it can and will quickly become a sweat fest, especially after they added Omni Movement. I know that some people may say it's a skill issue on my end, but people are absolutely disgusting with the new movement. I swear there are times where I just catch a glimpse of someone across the map and they come diving at me while swirling in the air and killing me instantly, and all I can do is just sit there and stare at the screen with a thousand yard stare. It feels like I can't compete with all the fidget reactions and movements, but if you're someone who can, you will probably like this game. Also, the time to kill feels very inconsistent. I swear that I can dump a whole mag at someone and I'll have them to their final bit of health only for them to turn around and zap me instantly. It just feels like I can't compete at points. As of now, at release, there are 16 maps. 12 of them are core 6v6 maps, while the remaining 4 can be played as strike maps, which are 2v2s and 6v6s. For the most part, I like the map layout for the maps. They have a general good flow and are pretty fun. Three of the maps, which are Red Card, Low Town, and Vault, are maps that are a little too big for 6v6. If you're not playing an objective-based game mode, the flow will become stale, but I still personally like these maps. However, I felt that this game needed more maps at launch. I feel like I only play on the same maps, and I just wanted more variety since I played like a third of the maps during the beta. For the weaponry, there are 33 weapons, which I believe is the lowest amount for any COD in recent times. I would say that the selection is alright, and you'll find your favorite weapon quickly. Of course, the gunsmith has been brought back, and what I like most about this edition of gunsmith is that it seems simplified. There isn't like 5-7 to seven suppressors for one gun that barely have any differences between them. It felt pretty straightforward to the player on how to customize the weapon to their liking without all the extra nuances and features. With all that said, I would give the multiplayer a 6 out of 10. It's nothing too special, but it is what you can expect out of a Call of Duty. The multiplayer is not innovative by any means, but it still offers the traditional experiences that you can expect in any Call of Duty. It is fun, but prepare to get sweaty or else you'll get punished otherwise. I haven't truly played Zombies since Black Ops 2, so I may not be the most qualified to talk about this, but I actually like the Zombies in this game. 
It felt fun and entertaining, especially since they brought back round-based zombies again. I have heard many people say that it felt like Warzone because you had armor plates, the zombies had visible health bars, and armor. To me, that didn't really ever cross my mind while playing, and I really didn't care that the enemies had armor or displayed health. It made no difference in my experience. With Zombies Back, there are two maps, Liberty Falls and Terminus. Liberty Falls is a small town that takes place in West Virginia, while Terminus is located at a remote prison in the Philippine Sea. Of the two maps, I felt that Terminus embodied the zombie atmosphere the most, but I thought Liberty Falls was a better map of the two to play. I think both maps are definitely unique and fun in their own ways, especially Terminus since it is so vast as well as the fact that you can use boats to travel to other points of interest across the map. Like I said, I'm not the most qualified to talk about zombies, but it was a fun experience that I greatly enjoyed playing. I would give it a solid 7 out of 10. Since the game just released, Warzone and Season 1 are currently not available. That said, some information is available though. In the newest edition of Warzone, two maps are going to be added, Area 99 and Verdansk. Area 99 is a resurgence map that will be releasing alongside Season 1, and it is coined as the birthplace of Nuketown. As for Verdansk, it is expected to come sometime in 2025. Furthermore, Warzone will feature carry-forward content from past Call of Duty games such as MW2 and MW3, meaning that Warzone will continue support for weapons, blueprints, operators, skins, and the vast majority of the cosmetics from such games. Lastly, we can most likely expect for Season 1 to release mid-November. After everything I have said, I think that the game is solid and has helped push Call of Duty away from the disaster of what MW3 was from last year. But I do not think that this game is truly remarkable or innovative within the franchise. It is a solid game that you will enjoy, that will provide a strong and well developed campaign, an average multiplayer, a fun zombies mode, and most likely a war zone that will be filled with metas and sweats. Overall, I would give this game a solid 7. If you are someone who likes COD and its formula, this game is meant for you. If you have Game Pass Ultimate, you can just download the game for free and enjoy it without really any buyer's remorse. Play it, experience it, and if you don't like it, you're not really out anything, but that's up for you to decide. Thank you all for making it this far, and I really hope that I was able to provide you with some insight into the game without giving away too much of the plot from the campaign. I just really wanted all of you to have an idea of what you may be getting yourself into without someone trying to build a false image of the game. You all deserve to know whether or not that this game is worth buying because of your time and money, and I hope that I was able to help. Thank you all once again for listening, and as always, take care.